Hi folks. So first of all, why did I name this video as most simplest advanced technique? So the reason is understanding this technique is very straightforward. You just need to focus on the key ideas and anyone can understand this technique. But the applications of this technique are like crazy. Like this is often used in some very seemingly super hard problems. All right, so let's get started. Let's say we have a tree. By tree, we just means here a connected, undirected graph, and it doesn't have cycles. So let's say if we have x node in it, then x minus one will be edges inside that tree because it doesn't have edges, right? And all the nodes are connected. All right. So with this tree, with every tree, like we want to maintain a some sort of representative. Let's say, and it can be anything. So let's say for this one, one is the representative, or you can call it like component number, things like that. For this one, six is the uh, representative. So we have more trees for this one. It, it could be X, it, it could be Y. Okay, so this is, uh, but just to highlight, like this is similar to what we do in disjoint set union, but actually in this video, I want to focus on the merging part because this is also used in that, but it have application in many problems. Like this idea of small to large merging, which we are going to talk about. Okay, so the goal is that with every node, we want to maintain this component number, right? Component number. And so let's say, so that basically we want to answer in constant time, what is the component number for one particular node? Okay. So let's say initially we have this bunch of trees. What we can do is we can do a DFS and for every node, we can choose some component and some node as the component number or the uh, representative for that component and we can assign it in one DFS. So if we have n nodes in O n time, we can do the DFS and, and let's say we have one array, in that array we are storing all this value. So for three we stored one, for two also we stored one. Similarly for eight we stored six, seven we stored six, all day. Till now it's fine. The one DFS, we can do that. But what happens if we also have to merge two trees? All right, let's say someone tells us, okay, we want to create an edge between five and seven. Okay, so now basically, let's say I say, okay, we just iterate one of the trees and then we can update the component number on all the nodes of that tree. All right, the technique would work, right? We can, let's say, if we want to merge these two trees, so what we can do is we can do a depth first search on this tree and then we can update the component number for all of these nodes. Okay, that would work, right? Because in the, in the beginning also, we actually did that DFS only. And so again, we can do the DFS and this would work. But, but what would be the complexity of that approach, right? Okay, so let's say we have in total n nodes. So, and we get like Q queries of these merging type. So eventually it can be Q of, of QN, right? Because I mean, we can, in the worst case, we can be merging really large two nodes. So the total complexity would be going towards this. Okay, that's not ideal though. I mean, can we do better? It turns out just one simple idea makes it like crazy better. And that idea is whenever we are merging two trees, let's say one have the size X, and the other has the size y. If and 
without the loss of generality we can assume x is less than y so basically x is the one which have smaller size so what we are saying is that always do dfs on this so basically whatever the component number of y was if it was 6 then we do a dfs on the whole tree of x and we reassign all the parents in the x as 6 all right so i mean we just did one simple thing while we are merging out of which one we should which tree we should update all the values of we just did this greedy technique choose the smaller one okay but like why does and yeah so like what happens first of all after doing this complexity becomes of n log n of all the queries i mean we'll talk about why first of all like if you have some idea about this or you can try to think uh at this point you can pause this video and try to make sense of it okay mm, all right let's go to that time complexity analysis and by the way this type of time complexity analysis right this is generally also a very useful technique because one in this scenario one query can have like a o and time also but the average complexity of all the queries combined would come as this y so now we would look instead of looking at each query we would look in reverse by reverse what i mean is that let's say we have a node node number seven so what we will do is we want to count how many times this node will be iterated basically in how many queries or how many dfs we will come at this node okay so let's say initially one time we came at this node all right after that let's say we are doing a dfs on the subtree of this node at that time let's assume size of this node subtree was k what would be the size of this node subtree after the merging happens try to think basically it is related to this point because of this greedy rule we are applying so basically if the subtree had k which means if we are doing dfs on this subtree that says this was the smaller subtree out of the two subtrees we are merging right two trees we are merging so can i say that after this merging size of this would size of the new subtree here which would have new tree which would have seven would at least be 2k would that be fair why because k was the smaller tree so at least after the merging size of the new tree would be 2k correct after that 4k similarly 8k and this can go only up to n because n is the total number of nodes so at every point we are doubling it right so these number of steps can be at max log n so for one particular node which was node 7 we proved that it will only come in log n dfs's and there is nothing special about this node so like when there is nothing special about something we call it without loss of generality so like we can similarly choose 8 9 10 1 2 any particular node and we can make the same argument saying that this would be log n only this node will come in log n dfs's so <laughs> in total we would iterate log n nodes in all the queries hence proof that's it 
if you did not understand anything particular feel free to comment on the video i will try to uh, like re reply to all of the comments asking doubt about this but yeah so this problem actually came in yesterday's app project contest like this technique is used in yesterday's contest last problem which was problem g so like if i i, I tell you that okay i mean this would be used in g you will think okay this is like crazy hard i mean this is way above our level and you won't even try reading it but now you you can see like this is like the concept is not that hard obviously application takes some time and practice to sort of recognize or oh, like this is the problem where i i can use the technique but yeah actually i i, I have it written editorial for that problem g also Actually, this is the main idea which is used in this problem small to large margin all right so that's about this video see you guys in the next educational video and